So I think the thing that surprises most visitors is just how far gliders can fly and how long they can stay in the air for. They always think you're falling from the sky like a rock. We just kind of float around. You go up, you come down. You can fly a glider in this country in the right conditions, a hundred or literally even a thousand kilometres. We fly for mm, five or six or seven hours. And they definitely don't understand, and a lot of power pilots don't understand, that we can fly to the sort of heights we fly at. We go to 30,000 feet in wave. You know, that, that is the big misconception. Oh, misconceptions. The gliders have to be light. No, they don't. Uh, sometimes we carry water ballast to make them heavier, to make them go better. How can you control it? It hasn't got an engine. Well, I control it like I control any other aeroplane with the, you know, with the control column and the rudder pedals and, and so on. Where do you land? Well, you land where you decide to land because you're flying it. And I think the misconception comes because people think it's not got an engine, so how can you possibly control it? The one thing I'm always asked is when I'm flying cross country and if I can't make it back to the airfield, if I land in a field, when I get out of the cockpit, often people run into the field and say, are you okay? You go, yep, I'm fine. And they always say, what happened? Did the wind stop? What happens if the wind stops? Did the wind stop? What happened? Did the wind stop? You know, because they think we're like kites. And people think it's the wind that keeps you in the air. Well, that's not true, actually. What keeps you in the air is the aerodynamic design of the glider. It's only certain air currents that we require to keep flying. We don't require the wind per se. You use that energy from the environment to actually get you going up. And the thrill you get when you get even your first hundred feet without an engine pulling you up is beyond explanation. The biggest misconception about gliding, I would say, is that it is very expensive. It's simply not true. Isn't it expensive? Well, compared to other sports, no, it's not. Uh, if you want to do motor racing or even golf, I think you'd spend an awful lot more money than you would do on gliding. A lot of people think it's more expensive than it actually is, and it is actually affordable. It's probably the least expensive way to learn to fly fixed-wing aircraft, and it's because we, we all pitch in and do stuff. Another thing that comes up is people tend to think of gliding as an individual sport, which it most certainly isn't. It takes a lot of people working together to get you in the air, so it's much, much more sociable than powered flying where you'll turn up for your one hour lesson and go home afterwards without meeting the rest of the club. In gliding it's not like that. You turn up in the morning, you, you, you get to know everybody very quickly and you work as a team to make the gliding happen. We see an awful lot of people come through here doing trial flights or beginning to learn to fly and there's always the misconception that gliding was for other people. I, I could never afford to glide or that was for people with superhuman ability. Most people can learn to fly and it's open to everybody. 